So we're getting a tow from this catamaran OCA because my engine leaks. They are picking up their mooring right now and they're going to drop a line back to my boat. I'm going to attach it and then detach from the mooring and they're going to pull us just two miles over to the next anchorage. Um, I have been towed by boats before but I've never done it this way so I really hope that everything goes well. Welcome to Wintipi Sailing. I'm single-handing my Grind 27 around the world. I started my trip in Maine with a very cold 10-month overhaul of my entire boat. Solo sailed through the Caribbean, the Panama Canal, and 41 days alone across the Pacific. I've been cruising in French Polynesia for the last year and a half, kiting, spearfishing, freediving, and of course fixing all the things that break on my boat. Aboard the Gek, I have no fridge, water maker, fancy electronics, and my rowboat is a dinghy with a sail rig. If you're interested in seeing my daily life, check out my Instagram, at Boat Lizard. Okay, enjoy the episode. So just kind of setting up my mooring so it's easy for a quick release right now. So what I've done is just uh, looped this through and put it onto the cleat. So all I have to do is take this loop off my cleat and then the whole thing will go off and then this ferry lead is available for putting their line through. Gotta be quick guys, please! Yeah. Destination. We are underway. <laughs> and so far, so good. Tow ride is a little short. We don't have that far to go. And uh, worst case, I'll turn on the engine and just drop the line. And Holly is the figurehead, making sure that the lines stay attached. It's really important to watch rope and make sure that it holds tight. They teach you that after watching kettles, that's lesson one. Watching rope is lesson two. It's starting to get um, shallow in here and there are lots of bombies in the water. So it's a little sketchy. We're so oh, it's a shallow one. What does the depth say? Alright, it's all you. Will you go in reverse, Tika? Oh, we're off. We're on our own. Okay, you can go back into neutral. Awesome. All right, we are autonomous again. <laughs> All right, time to go ashore. Tegan and I are getting ready this morning to leave to sail to Ringaroa. It's about 140 miles beam reach to get there and because of the past tides and not wanting to leave in the dark, we're going to leave at around midday today and just have to sail really slowly, <laughs> uh, which is kind of normal for going between atolls and the two motors. I feel like I'm always slowing my boat down so that I can make the next tide. Um, it's pretty windy today and tomorrow, but then the wind starts to drop off. So we kind of have a day and a half of good wind and then it pretty much dies. Uh, so we're trying to hurry in before that happens. We're anchored in a spot with a lot of rocks and the chain is probably tangled around them. So it might be tricky 
Uh, and it's also kind of deep here. We're giving ourselves lots of extra time so that we don't have to worry. All right, so we're a little stuck. I'm gonna go in the water and try to free us. Tika's gonna stand by on the front bit of the anchor and let it in or out as we see fit. But this is gonna be tricky and there's a squall and we're a little close to this boat. So it's high stakes and we need to be underway in 20 minutes. So I was anchored in about 45 feet of water and I had to dive down a couple times to free the anchor. It was super wrapped around a bunch of coral and pretty deep. So it took about 10 minutes to get everything all undone. Right now, Holly is diving the anchor. Um, I'm just waiting on anchor standby, waiting to let the chain in or out. Just kind of watching this squall come over. I can feel that it's getting a lot colder and darker. There she is. What do you think? Okay. Fingers crossed. So, just got the anchor up. It was really crazy. Um, we were too close to the catamaran because when I anchored, the wind was in a different direction and then it shifted and our anchor was almost directly under them. And the anchor got caught on coral because we dragged while I was taking off the float and the chain got caught under the cleat and we were really close to them. It was really intense. I'm super winded. Now I'm turning into the wind, Tika's going to raise the main, and then we're going to turn off the engine. It was not a raise the anchor under sail moment, but they can't all be. Morning. Search and recovery. Stuff. Brain, where is brain? It is missing a bolt. I'm making this a hoot. Ow! Take us on the helm. The dangers of cooking in a bikini. Going, going, going. Going, going, going. Next stop. Brain, you're on. Hadley, Noah. Yes, it's a beautiful day. It's really nice to have another person steer the boat. So I can actually do other stuff um, and not feel like I'm such a tied to the helm, so it were. Captain goes down with his ship. Captain goes down with the ship, down into the galley to eat snacks. <laughs> I'm adding canned spinach to the risotto and kind of questioning why I bought this enormous can of spinach and thinking about how strange the ratio of spinach to risotto is going to be. I didn't even put a third of the can in, and it was already enough. And then it will be Sp spinach con risotto. Oh my gosh. So much spinach. So much spinach in the world. Also going into the mixture, garlic and my shelf stable cheese famous house specialty all right this is done i also added um nutritional yeast salt rosemary and uh what's that one chipotle and it's very very spinachy i would not recommend putting in this much spinach unless you buy a giant can and you use it all because you don't have a fridge well i got my tides backwards and instead of heading out at slack low we actually hit it at slack incoming to high so i looked over there and i saw all these white caps on the water where they weren't supposed to be white caps and um decided to double check the tide and sure enough the tide is coming in until two o'clock instead of going out until two o'clock so we have about 45 minutes to kill and then we're just watching the white caps behind us because when they stop that means that the incoming current has stopped um and it's you know approximately two but you never know these things are not accurate so at least i know how to read the water even if i can't read a tide chart <laughs> the beginnings of the squall coming on we are in pass. Um, there's some current against wind action. All right, we are on course, and right now we're going dead downwind. 
since we are trying to keep ourselves slow because the way the past timing worked out we had to leave kind of earlier than we should have um i just have the main up and it works because wow uh we're going dead down so we don't have to worry about pulling out but it is making life pretty rolly here um we're also in the pass between the two atolls, which is sort of notoriously nasty waves because they kind of funnel through. So once we get past this part, uh, life is going to get a lot smoother. So <laughs> Sailing is fun. Sailing is fun. <laughs> I love sailing. Sailing is fun. Well, maybe the rain won't hit us. <laughs> uh, it's pretty windy. Look at those waves. It's Holly. It's a two-handed affair right now. Two-handed. <laughs> oh, there's no, a way. Ah, uh, uh, oh, wow, white cap. Oh. We're actually not joking about the two-hander, though. It yeah. is necessary. La 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 la. <laughs> la la la. Everything is okay. La 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 la. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's actually really cool. You can see the right angle squall. Go on a nice relaxing Tahiti vacation, they said. <laughs> it will be fun, they said. <laughs> the first droplets are announcing themselves by squall lore. This means that the worst of the wind has passed or has already arrived, so it won't get worse. <laughs> Cross your fingers, ladies and gentlemen. And again, is a bunch of bunk. <laughs> oh, it's raining. <laughs> So it's raining <laughs> and winding. Yeah, this is crazy. How fast do you think those winds were blowing? I mean, I would say high 30s at least. Because at one point I couldn't keep us downwind. That was scary. <laughs> Nervously giggle. <laughs> it's morning, day one, and we are eating breakfast in the cockpit. Probably make green tea and Leftovers. Leftovers. <laughs> I added sriracha and um, more nutritional yeast to make it feel different this morning. But hopefully we're done with the spinach and we can start eating other things like the can of spinach. <laughs> leftover. It was a really beautiful night last night. There wasn't one single squall after our line of squalls. So it's kind of rocky, rolly. Today should be a nice, easy day. Right now we're in the lee of Apataki and it's flattish and rollish, but pretty not bad. It's the end of the day and not much has changed. <laughs> Reading popcorn Yum. and watching the sunset. It's been a really beautiful day today. Only one little squall. The biggest news of the day ever. <laughs> oh, oh no. <laughs> second morning and I've just been altering course all night because we're flying. I mean, weather-wise, beautiful night, but not much wind. The mainsail kept slapping around and I wasn't sleeping very well. So we're still waiting for slack tide. You can see the current extending. We're about a mile out from the pass and you can see it ripping into the ocean right now. It's really insane. We've been out here for three and a half hours now outside the pass and it still doesn't look like it's turning. Um, seems like it's still going out. All right, I'm going for it. Uh, I'm sort of tired of waiting. Okay, we are going for it. I just put up the headsail. 
so we have some nice speed on 3.7 knots um pass looks pretty smooth we might have a little incoming with us which would be super nice so there was still quite a bit of outgoing current when we entered the pass i had full sail up and my engine on and at one point we were down to less than a knot watching the land slowly creeping past us hoping that we were gonna make it but we did, even though it wasn't the smoothest of entrances, it was better than sailing around back and forth in front of the pass. Current against wind, but sails and engine against current with wind. I'm so happy that we're making it in. We made it in. Anchored in 22 feet of water in front of the pack. And it's just beautiful, beautiful, clear. Even though we just got in last night, we are going to leave this morning to head to an anchorage that you can only anchor in when there's basically no wind. It's wide open to the east, and since there's no wind today, it's the perfect day to sail over there so Tiga can see it before we leave. Because of my engine leak problems, we are going to try to sail there, so we're going to up anchor under head sail, which isn't really a big deal because there's no wind. Uh, we just have to make sure that the boat is aiming towards the open lagoon and not towards the reef. Mm -hmm. And the only risk is if we go this way, we'll hit a lot of coral. So we're going to try to not do that. There's a lot of boats watching us right now. Probably because we're sailing so fast. <laughs> um, I mean, if my engine didn't leak, I would definitely be motor sailing right now. But as it is, 1.3 knots is very respectable. We only have two miles to go, so less than two hours. All right, so we've anchored, it's a little deep here. I dropped in 40 feet and we swung into 50, but with light wind like this, you can swing kind of 360 degrees around your anchor. So dive the anchor and make sure it's dug in pretty well, but it did pass the backing test, so that's good news. Life is a winding road No telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights And I I really wanna know, really wanna know If I Let me figure out where the road goes I'm falling down, I will keep on searching for my highs You can say I lost my mind, I will keep on holding my head high Even if the sky is falling down Tiga and I are getting ready to go out for pizza! 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 So, okay. <laughs> we're bringing some rum in a jar. Um, the, a lot of the restaurants here don't sell alcohol. And so our plan is to bring our own rum and then buy a mixer. This is Tahitian rum. It tastes like something you might clean your floor with. But when you add ginger <laughs> to it, it becomes palatable. So this is our rum. We're going ashore. Hi. We're seeing if we can... Um, float the dinghy up this little streamy bit and then into the river and float up to the bridge. Okay, so Holly is sculling us because we're going up a river and that's the only way that you can take a boat up a river. I'm also standing just because it's kind of fun. <laughs> so we're coming to the end of the river. You can see there's the big bridge up ahead and on the outside of that is the outer reef and you can hear and see the surf crashing on the outside. Here's our welcoming committee. Hi puppies! Hi puppies! You don't want to get your feet wet? Oh, they're oh, so cute. Beautiful oh, little puppies. <laughs> so high trusting our wings to fly sometimes we're crashing down but 
We get up and start from the ground And I, I really wanna know, really wanna know If I, I'll never figure out where the road goes Even if I'm falling down, I will keep on searching for my high Say I lost my mind I will keep on holding my head high Even if the sky is falling down Someone carry me back to my dinghy. <laughs> Tegan and I are walking home. Hello, these are our shadows. And it sounds like there's some singing coming from the church. I'm parking. <laughs> We're waiting at the airport. We're having our sadness espresses. <laughs> you can't be sad if you have delicious coffee. It's true. It's true. <laughs> and this is the tiny airport. It's really cute. Well, I just dropped Tiga off on the plane. And I have to get the car back because um, my friend Gael is getting off work soon and he needs the car. So I wanted to wait until the plane left, but it's silly because he wouldn't see me anyway. So I'm just going to take off and oh, I'm so sad. But we've made plans. She's going to visit me in Fiji. So that's good. Thank you for watching this week's video. I put out new videos every two weeks on Mondays on YouTube. And for my patrons, you guys get a snack on the weeks that I don't put out a full-length YouTube video. Thank you, Tish, for being my manager, helping me schedule these videos on YouTube and get them out on time. Thank you guys for all of your lovely comments. Don't forget to buy Windtippy merchandise. There's a link to my shop in the description below. I love how we're all wearing our shirts together on Mondays. It's a super fun thing to do. Thank you to my patrons who are supporting me and making this venture possible. If you'd like to become a patron, my Patreon is patreon.com slash And for one-time donations, my PayPal is paypal.me slash This week's edit is coming to you guys from the boatyard. So uh, can you tell I was doing bottom paint earlier? <laughs> it's going to be black. Um, today I... So yesterday I had the guys move the jack stands and today I'm priming and then I'm going to put bottom paint on the spots where the jack stands were. I am wearing a paper suit while I'm bottom painting to protect myself, um, but apparently it doesn't work properly so I do have some splotches on me. But don't worry, I'm using all the 
correct protective equipment. And with that further said, I need to get back to work. I drank way too much coffee this morning. Um, I'm dying of heat as I'm editing this. And I don't know if you can hear sound in the background, but the guys are repaving part of the boatyard this weekend. So it's a little bit loud. Okay. See you guys, patrons. I'll see you next week. Bye.